violent treatment of foreign journalists in China in recent weeks is becoming its own news story. So we thought we'd take you to our news bureau in downtown Beijing to show you how the CBS China team gets the job done every day. Foreign TV crews have been at odds with authorities for decades. This footage of a CBS cameraman was shot in the 1990s. Hands-on harassment of journalists was common back then. And even though it's an issue again now, we usually deal with more subtle problems. Often, we have a story we want to tell involving corrupt officials or, more recently, possible Egypt-style anti-government protests. But it's next to impossible for us to record footage. We were blocked from getting near the home of Nobel Peace Prize winner Liu Xiaobo. In another instance, this was as close as our cameraman could get to an illegal jail in Beijing. Sometimes we have to use small cameras to get the shots we need, whether it's fake Olympic merchandise on sale during the 2008 Summer Games or this underground church meeting on the outskirts of Beijing. Once in a while, interviews are canceled at the last minute after police visit the homes or offices of our story subjects, warning them of dire consequences if the interview goes ahead. Even if that doesn't happen, we have to work fast before the police show up, demanding to see our IDs, like they did during this 2009 story on cancer villages in southern China's Yunnan province. Or in this case, in 2008, when whole neighborhoods were being torn down to make way for new high-rises in China's capital. <laughs> Reporting conditions can change from month to month. During the 2008 Sichuan earthquake, we had unprecedented access to shoot whatever we wanted. But a year later, when the government was under fire for shoddy school construction, we were forced to record interviews in secret. Even if the Chinese police don't stop us, foreign TV crews are often unwelcome in sensitive locations. Guards at this toy factory, accused of using lead paint in their products, didn't want to let us in. And this homeless man in Beijing forced us away too. In the worst cases, like during an interview last year with parents whose children were killed in random school stabbings, our interviewees were detained by police after we left town. No matter how difficult our job becomes as foreign journalists working in China, we have the ultimate choice of being able to leave the country to return home. Others aren't so lucky. 34 Chinese journalists are currently behind bars for doing the same job as us. Celia Hatton, CBS News, Beijing.